We're gonna vibe out with Anthony Bourdain, a whole big bottle of wine, and some chicken. Super interesting. Welcome back to Bourdain. Everybody should know how to use a knife. Use everything, waste nothing. Let's start at the beginning. It ain't that hard, okay? Hope you're doing good. My name is Mitch May. We're working through Anthony Bourdain's cookbook. Today is a very classic chill recipe. A lot of ingredients and a lot of prep, but not super complex when you get down into it. Coco Van. I think I said that pretty good. This dish involves taking chicken with a lot of wine, pearl onions, bacon. I don't need to go on. If you like, I got Bourdain's book linked down below in the description. Let's go. So we got a ponytail going today. Recently went to Whole Foods. Felt good about myself doing that because I finally fit in. To do our initial prep, you have to go back a day in time, AKA yesterday. And let me show you what I did. So the night prior to cooking the dish, we roughly chop one white onion. Bourdain calls for one carrot, but I roughly chopped two little ones, two stalks of celery chopped as well. And we make a bouquet garni. Note, look at your herbs before buying them. This parsley looks like poop. Bouquet garni is kind of a trademark in French cooking. It is parsley, thyme, and bay leaf all wrapped up into a cute little bundle. Then we get four whole cloves along with some peppercorns. Since this is all going in a sauce that will be strained anyway, I decided why not put it in a little tea infuser I have everything in a big old pot to accommodate one whole chicken I've recently been watching Jacques Pepin go to town with carving and the dude's a god he allows the weight of the bird and the knife to kind of just do the work and you're going with the anatomy freeing up that joint and then once you see it cut in between it and you actually pull the leg off of the carcass and it comes off amazingly cleanly same thing on the other side you allow the anatomy of the bird to do the work and your sharp knife of course find that joint and then once it is separated you just pull and it comes off clean right off the bone. I then remove each wing. This was a little trickier, but I got it. Now it's time to remove the backbone. That strip of fat we're gonna follow along with our knife. And getting to the end of the strip, we just pull and it frees up once again. Same side and the backbone rips out. It takes a little force, but it comes out relatively easily. I decided to remove the skin from the breast. It was kind of hanging off anyways. And then for easier butchering of the breasts, we're going after the wishbone. Free it up with your knife and then you just kind of dig in with your hands and it will pop out. Sometimes I broke it this time I'm happy it came out clean with the wishbone gone we can just chop straight through this carcass and get each breast individual and I removed something from one of the breasts not sure what that thing is then we remove the thigh from the drumstick there's this area where the knife just wants to slip in you kind of have to feel for it but there is a sort of division of fat where you can read where the knife should go I removed the wingtips as Bourdain recommends and we are left with eight pretty well butchered pieces of chicken time for damn near our main ingredient with this dish wine all $10 of it tasted exactly how I thought it would. Our chicken goes in the pot and we dump our wine in. I didn't really measure this, I should have, but Bourdain calls for a bottle. I just made sure there was enough to cover the entire surface of the chicken. Wrap this bad boy up and I put it on top of a plate just to ensure no leakage of chicken guts, blood. I don't need that in my fridge. And that'll marinate for the entire night until we're ready to cook. Chicken looks different, the juice looks different. We have to separate the chicken, we have to separate the vegetables. I'm just gonna dive right in here. Fish out our chicken, looking really strange. And now we gotta get the salads into a separate container as well. I'm kinda hype I did this with the pepper cause now the peppercorns aren't gonna get everywhere. When I made rabbit, those peppercorns got in every nook and cranny. These off to the side. I feel like this is a nightmare if you are fearful of cross-contamination like someone I know and poor. It's amazing how that wine just is now murky and kind of funky looking. Chicken bloody, <clears throat> chicken bloody wine stuff over here. Actually, I can already tell it's gonna make like a really nice sauce. Just run out of room. Let's get a Dutch oven on medium-ish heat. Now we're gonna pat our chicky dry. I've said it before and I will say it again. Water is browning's enemy and that is what we're trying to do with this chicken. We're trying to get it nice and brown, nice and seared up and water just interferes with that Maillard reaction. A little razzle dazzle, about a foot on top. I'm gonna transition to tongs cause I don't want to uh, dirty my hands again. Yes, I know these aren't tongs, they're better. Over to the pot, pan, Dutch oven, you know, hot thing. Heat, two tablespoons of oil and two tablespoons of butter until almost smoking. Already I'm seeing something. I heated this up over medium heat and the butter is browning, it's blackening. I don't think that's that great. What I'm gonna do is start over again, start with just oil and then add the butter. Skin side down. And then sear the chicken, turning with the tongs to evenly brown the skin. Caramelization that's going on here. <whistles> Baby, wow. Looks okay. My issue again is that we're getting a little too dark color on the bottom of the pan. I'll add our butter. 
and place our chicken down. Gonna pull everything. Looks all right, it's got a really nice color to it. Add the reserved onions, celery, and carrot to the pot and cook over medium high heat, stirring occasionally until they are soft and golden brown. Power move, it's only been about six minutes, but I'm not crazy about that blackening there. Sprinkle one tablespoon of flour over the vegetables and mix well with the wooden spoon so that the vegetables are coated. Now stir in the reserved strained marinade, Put the chicken back in the pot along with the bouquet garni. Cook this for about one hour and 15 minutes. At this point, Bourdain says, have a drink. You're almost there, so don't mind if I do. This is Liberty Creek from the California region. We got a half a pound of button mushrooms. Bourdain doesn't say to chop these things up, but he also calls for small buttons. These are kind of like big buttons. Let's quarter them, just like that. Even these ones, just leave it like halves. There we have it. And now we're gonna take some bacon and cut it up into lardon, which is basically like thin little strips of bacon. Find interesting here, there's definitely the skin there that might be a little too tough. So I think I'm gonna just kind of shear it away. I don't really know, do they use the skin for bacon? I know they make like chicharrones and stuff like that. Quarter by one inch. Great time for the comment of the week. The attempted cook has found me and he has his own YouTube channel as well. He commented on my fish recipe. Thanks for uh, appreciating the choice of sustainable fish. I find it is pretty important as a cook, as someone who enjoys food to use ingredients that will be here for a while. This I'm completely butchering by the way, like, and not in a good way. Cool, bacon, finished. Wine, still cheap. Bacon lardon over medium heat until golden brown. Remove the bacon from the pan and drain it on paper towels, making sure to keep about one tablespoon of fat in the pan. So I'll take half a pound of mushroom tops in the bacon fat until golden brown. Interesting, there's almost like a two-step phase with the mushrooms. First they go in, they sizzle really loud, then a lot of moisture comes out, and then the moisture goes away, and then they start sizzling again. I think they're up to a good color now. Not too brown, not too black. I like that. I'm gonna get that off to the side. Little update on the chicken. It's looking pretty good. Looking kind of almost a little gnarly. That's the idea, just to keep it simmering low and slow. Now we're going to caramelize cute little tiny pearl onions. So the idea with these guys is to peel them. You have to like get off this tip here, get off that thing, try to go around and just get that little membrane it's it takes some time what we can do boil these for 30 seconds blanch them cold water and then they peel off just like little freaking grapes you remove that and then you pinch it and ideally the onion will just slip right out of there Boop. now in the small saute pan combine about 12 pearl onions two tablespoons of butter a pinch of sugar and a pinch of salt add just enough water to just cover the onions Reduce to a simmer and cover the pan with parchment paper and trim to the size of your pan and cook until the water has evaporated. Probably thinking I overcrowded the pan a bit. Eh, that's a little better. And continue to cook until the onions are golden brown. Set the onions aside and add a remaining cup of red wine to the hot pan, scraping up all the fond on the bottom of the pot. We got our wine reducing. We have the chicken simmering slowly, the mushrooms, the bacon, and the caramelized pearl onions. If you're into these kind of videos, think about subscribing. Support me, it means a lot. Let's get back to our sauce. You can see it's got a little more sauce action going there. Take a little sample of our chicken. Pretty damn tender. Ooh, gosh, that's tender. <laughs> Worth noting, I did cook this for two hours, not an hour and 15 minutes. The vegetables, I think I would eat these vegetables. Strain the cooking liquid again into the reduced red wine. Now just add the bacon, mushrooms, and pearl onions and swirl in two tablespoons of butter. Yes, 105%, this is tender. Can't freaking wait, I can't wait, I can't wait. A little mushroom. It does have a significant wine taste. It is very good. You know what, ma'am, that like, I get it. I get why Julia Child Bourdain, I've never tasted anything like this. And I say that every freaking time in this video, no matter what is going on in the day, the stress, the anxiety, putting stuff together, making something so 
fucking delicious. It really makes it worth it every time. It's such a deep sauce with the bacon, the mushrooms, everything is savory. It's just like the essence of savoriness. I am left with a few questions as always. One, if we were not to butcher this chicken, I think it would have been very difficult. We may have burned the fond and stuff and it's maybe too sharp of a flavor. So that's where you come in or Julia Child or whoever else, Gordon Ramsay can scream at me. Overall, it seems to be a very forgiving dish. Everything can store in the fridge nicely. We just made a pretty serious classical dish. Coca van, hope I said that right. This is back to Bourdain. Stay organized and clean up after yourself. You do the best you can.